Welcome to our puppet fabrication for stop motion. We're going to start from the basics here of doing the model sheet specifically for the stop motion puppet. So we'll go ahead and just jump right in. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, make sure I have my graph paper. I'm going to draw a vertical and horizontal key line. So I'm going to find my roughly my halfway point and uh, leave myself enough room for the actual puppet. So let's see if any of these numbers actually show up on camera. Kind of, sort of. There we go. So yeah, we're looking at about an eight inch puppet for this one on average. If I wanted it to be nine, I'd have to bring it down. Um, although it's gonna be really close to the top of the page and then my feet, I need. I was hoping to have a little bit of room to draw the thread bolts and stuff. So we're gonna go with the eight inch puppet just to make this a little bit easier on ourselves. And yeah, better to have more room up around the head than the through bolts coming through the bottom, the feet. So it's really important to use different colors at this stage to make life easier on yourself. So uh, use rulers, make sure your measurements are accurate. Uh, I'm going to do uh, the floor first. So you want a key line along the floor. And then you want a key line that's vertical. It's going to do your center line for symmetry, uh, also called the vertical key line in figure drawing. So, and I'm trying to keep these pretty accurate. So this is actually a dark blue pen. So it's, a, it's got a slight different color variation. Um, most of the colors I'm going to use are going to be your standard uh, red, green, and blue. A little bit of purple. Uh, even got a little yellow in there. But whatever floats your boat, just make sure it's clear that the lines are not going to get ever mixed up with the line of the feet or the line of the body and whatnot. And so for doing the head heights, um, you want to pick a pose, figure out how many head heights your character is. And it should be a relaxed A pose. So once you've got the floor and the vertical key line put on there, we could also add some uh, registration marks. And for the registration marks, I'll just use a regular liner pen. And I suggest doing a registration mark up here at the top. And two at the upper left and right, and then two down here on the base. So we'll also do a couple here. And I'm trying to use my graph paper as uh, much as possible. Kind of keep all our lines nice and straight. Uh, and if you want to get really fancy, you can add a, a circle on there, which is also uh, really helpful. So, and these these will allow you to align different tracing papers and do drawovers and refine your drawings uh, cleanly. So, really important. For that. And I went and got a different color, a little something more obnoxious that's going to show through. Uh, a little bit better hopefully on camera as well as when we're working so you want to get these uh, really accurate so um, you could just freehand a circle i've been going really fast but i figure since i'm recording now i might as well uh, put a little extra effort in there and make sure that it's uh, something i would typically do in production so there we go and that worked out pretty nice and These will help you a great deal. You could do these digitally, of course, as well. So every technique I'm doing here, you could do a um, digital equivalent. But for right now, it's easier if these are hand done, printed, on the table, um, you're ready to measure your armature wire, um, you're measuring your fabric, leather, cloth, linen, you name it. The last registration mark. And I found that uh, really quick, fast demos are great. So if you've seen some of my other in-class demos, I go way faster than I just did. But since we're recording. <laughs> okay, so we've got our registration marks. And let's get our generic kind of uh, gingerbread man, uh, Gumby sized uh, character. So I'm just going to use my um, blue animation pencil. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight heights. So I'm going to do the head right about here. And 
This is really light at first, so uh, you'll forgive how that looks on camera. And we'll go with a little bit more uh, chibi, so we'll go a little bit outside the standard with a head, and you should have a good styrofoam polystyrene ball to put in there. And whatever your drawing is, um, you can kind of bring it in. But for most of the drawings, what we're going to do for the first one, at least, is we're going to simplify uh, and standardize everyone's characters a little bit. So that way, and I'm counting my um, marks over here to make sure that I'm getting both sides pretty equal as I do this roughing stage. And this little, like, simple U, upside down U, kind of clean, bring the shoulders out. And maybe they just want to give it a little bit longer neck. So I think with these characters, we want to make sure that you have some kind of a neck. Um, you have a clear torso. You have some limbs. Again, I'm counting my squares here to make sure that the two sides are coming out equally. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I can darken a little bit. And that's what the blue and red for, is for, for animation pencil. You can explore. These are light, fast colors. I mean, they don't scan or take up too much. Um, show up too much when you're when I'm doing your drawing and scanning. And of course we can do your uh, spin around to your arc angle. Something's not done enough, I think, just for the I missed my miss the old animation tables days. There we go. So um, so you want space in between the arm and the torso, right? So as I'm drawing the torso out. Same thing down here with the pelvic region. So maybe this one will make his legs a little bit longer. There you go. And you want to have that thigh gap, <laughs> as we say, in here. So made this guy slightly bow legged for the demo. So I'm just kind of exploring the shape here. Oh, if you had your thumbnail already drawn out, of course, uh, you could be doing your design now. Now, uh, palms forward or palms. Uh, Palms forward or palms back for the so we can draw the armature wire. For this one, I'm going to do palms forward. So I'm going to pick that stopping point right there. Three. So you see how much easier things are with the graph paper, and that might mean that it changes the the kind of arc flow of the inside of the arm here. So it's going to have more of a you know you want to keep that where the elbow mark is. You want to make sure you know where that is. Same thing with down here with the knee couple lines for the knee so I'm kind of defining my joints as I'm going so I made the line straight that was incorrect I should have really kept him the arc flow going with the direction there we go so palms out so we'll do like a little wedgie spatula hand there we go and then the thumb comes out from the wrist and palm intersection there we go and uh, the middle finger is going to be the one that uh, protrudes first. So we'll go middle finger and then ring finger. Pinky do an arc here as well with a spatula. This looks like this one needs to be a little bit lower. There we go. And I think it's better to make your hands a little, uh, oh shoot, I did it backwards. And middle finger's over here. <laughs> and it occurs this way, ring finger here, middle finger there. Yeah, I usually do palms, uh, the arms to the side, palm side, or palms back. So I'm kind of doing it a little differently after building a few more puppets uh, recently. So that learning curve. So, yes, yeah, so it's this arc. The pinky should be the farthest one back, middle should be front. And so, roughing this in, um, and I erase back some of that. It's all right. And uh, we'll do the head. So, I'm just do standard head ratio, do the eyes are in the middle. Of the head but between the eye and the chin the nose is exactly halfway between the nose and chin the mouth is exactly halfway that's a, some easy ratios to remember uh, we can bring the side in here and uh, the back the sternocleidomastoids process come down here in front and then you have the trapezius muscles here and i could do a little circles for the deltoids we do little uh, circles down here for the knees, bicep, um, chest region right here. here. We go, and then uh, between the nipples and the pelvis, or excuse me, the crotch, you have the um, belly button. Those are kind of your landmarks. And do a little rib cage here. Oops, try and keep it symmetrical as I go. 
And then we'll do the uh, abdominal muscles here. And then the inner part of the thigh, outer part. So these uh, straight lines should all be diagonal. So it goes this more this way. And the outer calf goes higher, lower calf. In the inner calf is lower. There we go. Outer calf's higher. And then when we do the feet, uh, really important when we do the feet, you want to just do a little triangle like this. Don't try and uh, do anything too fancy yet uh, when you're drawing the feet from the front view. They're pretty hard to get right the first time. And so, uh, and then you could do those turned outward too. So you could actually make the big toe here, and here. And we'll do a top down, uh, down here, and we'll do a side view over here. So that should be uh, pretty helpful um, in determining what the feet are going to look like. So uh, I'll do it with a different color though. And so uh, that's a pretty good start for the base of the body. So now what I will do is get the red and I'll try to bring out. So red and, and blue make. Uh, nice purple, right? So let's just uh, show you how that works one more time here, for those that missed that part. So I'll just do a little uh, blue line here on the page. See, it's really faint, hard to see. And do a red line next to it. Uh, it's a little brighter red, a little bit easier to see. But if I merge the two together, you'll see they make a nice rich purple, almost like a graphite color black. Oh, and I'll add the blue line over here next to that so you can see just uh, what kind of a major difference that makes when you do the blue and red. So yeah, so you can explore with the two colors and then uh, blend together. So when you've uh, explored and defined your line. So what I like to do now is uh, use both to you know, find the, where the actual silhouette's gonna be, all the major kind of forms. So this was done with blue and red. There's also another one of the mushroom men. Okay, and so for this one, um, I'm kind of just checking my measurements, chiseling some stuff in, and maybe we'll give him a little bit bigger chin. There we go. In the nose. Do a little brows here. You can get dragon eye, glass eyes, beads. Uh, you can get um, acrylic eyeballs as well. The eyes. I'm just keeping the face really simple for right now. There we go. And then whenever I feel I need it, I can grab the blue. That's why I'm bringing that back in again. So, yeah, this is like two lines over here. So I'm going to keep it two lines over there as well. So I'm double checking my measurements. So I want the base form. You want the base form of your body uh, when you're doing this to be as accurate as, as you can. Right, so here I am kind of uh, thickening the neck a little bit and bringing up the triceps is a bit of a longer neck. Looking at the major lines on the graph paper. And uh, once I do that, I've kind of made a new outer silhouette line so I can go back in with my blue. I've added that one. All right, and then we're going to continue down here with the uh, torso. So I'll get out here along. Um, before I get down too far on the torso, actually, um, it's a good idea to make sure I'm counting this right. It's a good idea to uh, define the collarbone because the collarbone really is somewhat of a flat in the front view and the bone kind of sticks up for the uh, deltoid part. So the deltoid muscles don't go above the collarbone in your standard A pose. You want to be really careful. The, te the trapezius does. Um, then we can kind of um, make sure the pectoral muscles here, pectoral muscles uh, goes uh, underneath the front part of the deltoid, and then the bicep goes behind both of them, goes underneath and connects up here to the uh, collarbone, clavicle. And double check in here again my measurements on both sides as I go. Quick. And then down along the side here. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Yep. And then at, at each joint, there's actually a diagonal. Like the uh, the outer part goes back farther than the inner part of the forearm. 
So you always want to be conscious of uh, each diagonal, just like at the knees, it slants inward. Right. So the outer, the flexors are bring your fingers up, right? Or sorry, the extensors extend, bring your fingers up, and the ex, uh, flexors flex and curl. These are the flexors underneath, extensors on top. So it's like some really basic anatomy stuff that's important to know. Just go on here. And usually the line down here uh, dips a little bit in the favor. It's not perfectly perpendicular to the arm. Right here, uh, it will typically um, angle just slightly towards the favoring the palm by too much. Um, actually, uh, <laughs> sorry, slightly the other way. And do the little spatula here, lower, going up higher. Thumb side, uh, having an apex with the middle finger, and then there's a curl back, way back for the um, pinky. There we go. And you can draw the thumb in there. I'll draw each uh, knuckle ever so slightly curved. You want a padding uh, in the hand here, padding on the side, padding in the front. So you get the major padding of the thumb. Draw my knuckle in. Constantly looking back and forth, making sure um, I'm being loose and fast, but uh, I still want my mirrors to be as accurate as I can. There we go. There's the end of the thumb. A little pad and thumb. And then we'll I'll just do a really slight curl on these. Just make sure there's enough space between them. One, two, three, four, curling in, in, straight, and then curling in. Point of finger, come back with my blue. There you go. And so what you'll end up doing, uh, for those of you who really did too fat of a character, like too plush for your first one, we're going to kind of roll it back a little bit and have it have a little bit more uh, space and shape to bend, make sure there's arms and fingers and torso can bend well. So be a little retrofitting on that first character. We want each character to have enough space between the arms and the torso to move. We want to need enough flex between the rib cage and the pelvis to move. We need enough space between the thighs for the legs to move, et cetera, et cetera. There we go. Here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then back up here. Okay, so abdominal, for the rib cage. This up here. And uh, this goes below the kneecap, actually, down here. And comes up. A lot of people miss that. Inner part of the leg right there. And it's filling in nicely in the red. We'll line down here on the side of the knees. Outer calves higher. And then with the ankles, the um, you have the outer ankle and the inner. The outer ankle is actually a little higher. Inner ankle is a little bit lower. So you want to kind of capture that another diagonal. It's kind of this way, just ever so slightly. As for the ankle, however, the foot itself is um, a triangle. Of course, the uh, ball of the foot is going to come up higher. You see, I'm off a little bit there, so I'll bring that in and make my fixes because you got the. Uh, so what the colors are for, the blue and the red. Kind of push and play with these uh, shapes and discover, you know, what makes sense. There we go. Bring that out a little bit. And we have uh, some major fixes to do. I'll pull out the uh, electric eraser. So the uh, uh, pencil eraser, 
makes a lot of sense as well as the electric one saves me a ton of time it's worth getting uh, rechargeable batteries to be able to really uh, co color shape and re-erase lines and use your eraser almost like a pencil to bring out form and to define what you're working on so if I'm way off like this one between the space here this is off uh, a little bit I could just take this and you see I'm getting a nice sharp edge there and that was uber fast compared to the uh, traditional eraser and eraser so I got both of my colors here some kind of uh, chiseling and as, as I'm double checking my measurements I'm able to bring these back along there we go. all right so that's pretty close um, I think in here, the eyes and the side, I might have uh, gone a little wider than I wanted to. The sides here, so I'll just kind of bring those back in a little bit right there. Like that. And then maybe uh, curl some of that skull back out again. And then, depending on how hard you scored or scratched into your paper, can get kind of hard. No biggie. It's just a design schematic, right? This is not an illustration. So trying to get your measurements right, your wire. There we go. And I think I haven't worked on the eyes all that much yet. So for that one, I might pull out some of my uh, mechanical pencils where I can really chisel as well as some of the uh, micron and liners but I don't want to jump the gun too quickly I want to make sure this is accurate first so I'm going to get the brown here first it's a little tighter and for the eyebrows on top and then do the um, arcs half moon crescent I usually do the upper lid first lower lid Underneath, there we go. And bring this in the bridge of the nose. And as I'm doing that, there we go. And I can get rid of maybe that broader nose that I put in there initially. No problem. These are all the major shapes that you need. And on the major lines, you could put a pupil. And if you want to, his eyes are a bit big. Go. Maybe that upper eyelid over a little bit more. Maybe that little nook in here under the brow. Maybe define that a little bit more. Red and the blue. Okay. Oh, should we zoom in a little closer for that? That's all right. Okay, yeah, but I think that's pretty close. We have our registration marks. We have our vertical key line. We have our ground. We have reg two registration marks on the bottom, left and right. Two registration marks to pop left, right, one center. Uh, the cross down here does make a registration mark by itself. So if we want to, I can go ahead and add that sixth one in there just to make sure that Technically that uh, with the two crosses come together, if I add the circle, that makes our sixth registration mark. Okay, and we've uh, defined the major silhouettes. We've got all the major uh, muscle uh, body parts, uh, landmarks. We've got the torso, rib cage, pectoral, deltoid, trapezius. Um, at the, the thighs, we've done our angles at each of the joints. And now it's time to do the head height. So. Let's find out how many chibis, how many head heights this character is. There's a little over eight inches, which is fine. So I'll take this here, go right to the top where the skull, you want to measure the skull. 
and where it touches. So I might actually bring that point up just a little more, just to make it easier for me to measure for this demo. But we do have like a little point um, actually up at the top of our head. There we go. So that should be good. So chibi head heights is how you uh, benchmark and do your landmarks for your character, right? So and maybe um, as I'm doing this, I realize that maybe he needs a little bit more chin as well. So I'll just kind of change that around a little bit. And yeah, it should work out okay. So we'll go down here. There you go. There's our main head height. So uh, one head for this character is uh, an inch and just over five eighths and one and 11 sixteenths. So we can go down here and I will mark it with my pencil. Okay, so we said one and 11, one and 11 sixteenths. And I'm measuring from the front and back of each mark. So we'll do it again. One and 11 sixteenths. One and 11 sixteenths. Double check I did that last one, right? Yeah. One sixteenths, one and 11 sixteenths. And one and. 11 sixteenths. There we go. So almost. I go ahead and draw these out. Use the same colored pencil. One, two, maybe one, two, three, four, five. So just a little tiny bit over five head height. So it's quite chibi, actually. He's got a large head to body ratio. So. The regular human proportion somewhere between uh, seven and a half and eight. Depends who you ask. All right, let's wrap these up. Looking for my one. one uh, the only downside using these thicker wax pencils is you actually do have to sharpen them every once in a while. Just looking for my sharpener. All good. There we go. And one more just off the ground. So you want to be accurate. One and this is one eleven sixteenths head heights uh, per head, and that's how you're going to benchmark like from the palm to the elbow, um, those different measurements, and then over to the side, um, whichever side makes sense. You can see I um, I made his jaw quite bigger, so I'm going to finish that down to the line now. So he's, I gave him a kind of bigger chin, and then I bring out his jawline to match that as well. There we go. And since I trot the uh, chin down so much, I might also bring his um, mouth and maybe part of his nose. Now these are just standard averages you can I mean, I expect to see a, a wide, wide variety, of course, of heads for this one. So yeah, now his head looks much larger compared to his uh, body ratio. Okay, but um, let's finish this um, this head height. So I'm gonna use my uh, micro micro liner here. Let's see if I have a little bit better one. Yeah, use this one. And you want your head heights to be inked you want to have a nice solid line just like we did for the vertical we brought the blue and the red this one something similar and it's just below that line there. there we go so yeah, once you're um, solid on the lines on the head edge, you go ahead and use your pen, a micro pen or a liner, or whatever makes uh, sense for you. You can use a ballpoint pen even. Uh, if you have different colored pens, you have like a blue, different thicknesses helps. Uh, this one's pretty thin, but you can see the lines are starting to uh, really emerge in the diagram. So they'll show up clearly. 
do the light table. There we go. And yeah, so that's the first step in the process. And hey, there's the alarm. 